Boom. Hello and welcome to the Executive Protection Lifestyle Podcast, Season 4. With your host, Byron Rogers, this podcast is dedicated to the executive protection practitioner, the private security professional. In this podcast, we're going to talk about the mental, emotional, psychological, physiological fitness that goes into being an effective efficient and effective executive protection agent. Whether you're in law enforcement, whether you're a mom that's looking at how to protect your children or a father that's focused on how to protect his family, I believe this podcast has something for all of you. We might even get into some tales from the crypts of true Hollywood stories from time to time. I'm doing this podcast because I feel the reality of this job is simple. If you really want to be good at executive protection, it's more than just a job. It really is a lifestyle. And those of you who've been in the game for any serious amount of time, you already know what I'm saying is true. So if that sounds interesting to you, enjoy the show. Out. Boom, what's up you guys? Welcome to another episode of the Executive Protection Lifestyle Podcast. I've got Rachel J in the house. Hello, hello. Hey, hey, it's an honor to have you. Um, I mean, we go back, like we go way back to like the first season and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I've always hailed her as a solid female in this game. And as I've been always looking to get, you know, solid female influence in here for all you lady agents out there, but also she's also a solid agent. So there's Aww. so much <laughs> that we're all going to learn in this. I don't want to make it about male, female, but I also want females to have a voice, you know? So heck yeah, here we are. It's an yeah. honor. And here we are. Can you uh, can you actually believe it? It's been three years since our first our, our first episode. I can't believe that was three years ago. I mean, I I understand twenty twenty doesn't count as as like life a moment in time, but <laughs> right. still, in the grand scheme of things, to look back on three years. And I went through um, that podcast, and I was just flipping through to see some of the stuff and topics that we were talking about, and how much. Things have evolved, not just like where you were three years ago, where I was three years ago, and just where we're at right now. Yeah. So much has happened. Yeah. So like much. in dog years. It's uh, in, yeah, it in is dog years, like in the industry, in our lives. Uh the brand, like I was looking at, I think we're on like I think we're on like season getting ready to hit season four right now. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you know? <laughs> How? Yeah, like I guess. <laughs> You know, I, and, I mean, and oh, dude. And so for those who don't know, you yeah. and I met on a contract. Yep. Like in the hottest place <laughs> in the universe. <laughs> yeah. To to this day, when people mention that state, I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> month? <laughs> like, uh, I'm cool if we're going to do work there, but let me know what month we're going to do work there. <laughs> Seriously. You know, for sure. And now we run our classes out there. And man, it just adds a whole other <laughs> level to the training. You better hydrate. You're going to AZ. Yes. Um, yeah. Yes. Oh, and obey the speed limits at all costs, at all costs. Like, I, okay. So <laughs> <laughs> I know like disclosure time or what, because I got blasted. Like I legitimately what? got wrecked driving through there from California. I hit the state line and then took like it actually gave me ptsd because it was nighttime and all of a sudden bop and i was like Whoa, what are we doing you know i'm like hitting the gas <laughs> is this like, a shame charge what's going on yeah you know they like kept pushing i was like push through the kill zone <laughs> and I was like, no, I just, get I'm off the like, x <laughs> yeah exactly. it's like randomly doing a temple index like driving off yeah, the side it was horrible <laughs> uh, no so for some reason for those who don't know <laughs> that state is wildly accurate when it comes to their um their cameras traffic. that their traffic cameras they will get you on a traffic camera you can yeah. go through a yellow light that is the one state that do no. not go through a yellow light <laughs> don't that mess it 100 a ticket my brother that yep. is a ticket that's very don't true through, don't go through reds don't go through the yellows mm -hmm. you, even just on a green you might want to second guess it <laughs> You know, just be like, just be be straight edge while you're there. I did hear though that the cameras, like now they're like not permissible in court or something like that. So I don't know. I'm not chancing it, but I did hear. I'm not going to chance it either. Not yeah. that. So, I, I will never chance it in that traffic, traffic game. Yo, so it's an honor to have you back here. Um, I always ask this question at the beginning of the episode. 
Um, you've been in, how long have you been in this industry? Well, no, no, no. Before we get into that, before we get into all that, <laughs> who is Rachel J? Who's the lady behind the work in this industry? Boom, if you've been enjoying the podcast, I want to encourage you to come and train with me. Train with us, the League of Executive Protection Specialists. We offer online courses so you can train and learn how to take your executive protection career to the next level from the comfort of your own home. Uh, we offer on-ground training on everything from the hard skills of driving, shooting, medical, um, and into the soft skills through the executive protection immersion course, which is one of the most experiential, learning-centric courses in the executive protection industry. Either way, I want you to become part of the golden standard in the private security industry and join the brotherhood, the League of Executive Protection Specialists. Go to epspecialist.com and let's do our careers together. I'll see you there. Out. Oh, good night. That's such, a, that's such a loaded question. Like, shoot, if you find out, let me know. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know? Um, let's see. I guess the long and short of it would be um, I went into the military, went into the Marine Corps, Semper Fi at 17 and yep. Yep. <laughs> Young and Semper Fi don't list, yeah. brother. <laughs> I, can only, I can only imagine. Um, oh yeah. Oh. I, I gotta say though, I had a phenomenal career while I was in, I was extremely fortunate with the people that I was around it. Not initially because the, the shop I was at initially was, uh, it, it was very office politics uh, and um, politics. I, yeah. And I wasn't there to do office politics and like, believe it or not, I was pretty reckless as a child. Believe it or not. Yeah. None of us <laughs> Marines, none of us were, like literally a hair <laughs> in not Marine speak, in edited Marine speak, a hair <laughs> between yeah. felon or Marine. Yeah, <laughs> like, like literally it's 90% of us. It's a cult, okay? The other yeah. branches are fraternities and stuff. This one is not a fraternity. We have human sacrifices. We will yeah. beat you up. Yeah. It's a oh, cult. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it was absolutely a cult. Yeah, Uncle Love Sam's it. misguided children, Lord of the Flies meets juvenile. Oh. Honestly, though, I love it because out of all the other branches, one thing that always comes back that you hear from people who are in other branches, they always commend Marines on their tradition always comes back to tradition where you can admire the past and yeah. recognize it for what it is, but you don't live within it. So, and I love how the Marine Corps does that between the birthday and the uniform and all of these different aspects that you wear in your everyday or a piece of tradition that you've brought forward with you. And yeah. that idea I think is so unique to the Marine Corps. And I know other branches do it in different facets, but I feel like the Marine Corps is the, that one branch that everything every single thing they have found a meaning for yeah i mean some of it's a stupid meaning like yeah. you need to duck walk so you can brass call like some of it's a stupid meaning like yeah. you ever just brush the floor like in a duck bottle yeah that's hazing <laughs> <laughs> actual hazing <laughs> oh my god i thought that was just scrubbing the floor mm -hmm. but uh so marine corps deployed at 19 and um on that note, I have to say I will forever commend the guys that I was with. Granted, they uh, they did think I was gay. But, <laughs> As a but, protection mechanism, probably. <laughs> um, yeah, but it was honestly the best thing that ever happened because it took everything out. And yeah. it was I I went into it knowing that I'm going to stay in my lane and I don't know their job. And I just need to know certain aspects of it. If anything happens, you always know the jobs around you. Yeah. And it was a very good working relationship. They left me to my job and I did, you know, I did my stuff, they did their stuff. And after a couple of years, it was very, very cohesive. And I had a gunnery sergeant who pulled me aside and was like, and this changed my life. It really changed my life was, um, he asked me, do you want to be treated like one of the guys? Do you really yeah. want to be treated like one of the guys? Mm -hmm. And me being all of 18, I was like, absolutely. But it was like in a very Marine Corps way. So it was like, yes, can we charge it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> like a little bit of fear behind the rib Yeah, cage. like what's about to happen to me? <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, the like, guys are all like naked in the back of, 
Yeah. <laughs> They're all in the back of the squad bay fighting and like beating each other with pizza bones and like drinking <laughs> beers and like yeah. <laughs> it's just and debauchery. He asked me though, he was like, Do you do you really know what you're asking for? Yeah. And at the time I thought I did. Yeah. And I, I really didn't. And I'll be damned if fast forward, he didn't give me exactly that. And he stopped addressing everybody as gents and lady, and it was yeah. just gents. And then that's in, in my future, I address everybody as gents or yeah. something like that, regardless of any gender that's in the room yeah. because of that. And it just was such a blanket thing. It's such a little change. And then it was like, you know, there were no porta potties. There were no any kind of a luxury item you could think of. No, yeah. no ranger rolls, little taco rolls. Yeah living in it and he okay. really gave me that opportunity and mm -hmm. i think that even some of the women that are in today see it as an op you need to see it as an opportunity mm -hmm. you know instead of like i'm just going to do it because i want to be a hard ass yeah. and they gave me such a beautiful opportunity that changed my life and it's allowed me to give perspective to other women yeah. and telling them like you need to understand what you're really asking for when you're asking to be treated as an equal because yeah. you may be asking for it and unintentionally you don't know what you're getting yourself into and you could be setting yourself up for failure yeah. it has nothing to do with the guys intentionally setting you up for failure but this is a realm that you're not used to yeah. and you need to be well versed and ask questions and yeah. understand your role before you take that on yep and you know not fail yeah and not fail because it all comes down to the failings. If you yes. better be able to hold your shield and not be a weak link in that formation because it will wreck unit cohesion mm -hmm. and you just will prove that you can't handle being treated like one of the guys. And then yeah. it goes down in history as she just can't hack it. And then, and then it's it's like it's like me being a black guy. Like there's- I'm gonna, I wasn't going to say anything, but you know how you looked in the mirror. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. it's like black dudes and then there's those ones that make us look bad which i personally think are the niggas you know what i'm saying <laughs> in every culture and you know there yeah. is a war going on between good white people and the niggas you know what I'm saying? And it, it, it is what it is now. it and looks so it's, it's what it is you're representing a culture you're representing your sex in an environment when you know they're not the master the ones that usually dominate that environment you remember that you're representing a lot of people and you're you you better hold the line and that's yeah that's how i was raised and that's how and and i my grandparents who actually dealt with oppression like that actually were segregated against they were like son you're gonna have to be twice as good to get half as much respect you're gonna have to be twice as smart twice as fast to get half as much respect and so i grew up always trying to sharpen that edge and knowing that going into it and then when i perform you know what happens like the the tribe is like wow yeah they bring you to the top because they're like this dude's actually legit and he's actually representing and you rise to, and they actually want you to be in front to Absolutely. show like hey we're about merit not about all this other crap and this dude is legit and we are righteously putting him in a good position and um yeah it was the same thing as growing up as a woman and yeah. I, ironically enough i just had this conversation with my dad and he he and I were having like some some heart to heart. So there was definitely alcohol involved. Yeah. <laughs> right. And he said being a parent of a little girl was not something that I was ever prepared for. Mm -hmm. And it was to that a lot of those same things of you have to be twice as good. Yep. You, people are going to look at you differently. It, it doesn't matter what you feel or where your heart is or how good your intentions are just based on the visual and perception is a reality. Yep. Now you're kind of lumped into this group and you have to perform. set such, not, not just perform, but set such a higher standard yep. on everything. And, and what people don't talk about is the weight of the responsibility when, yep. uh, when everybody's gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and that that was a lot of the harder part in dealing with the mundane every day to day tasks mm -hmm. of having to continue to walk a straighter line when you really don't want to. When you yeah. really want to tell your teammate exactly where to shove it and yeah. exactly how to pound sand and 
you just can't or else that's going to screw up their impression of working with, you know, to you, a black guy yeah. and to me, <laughs> a female ever again. And I'd be danged if I dishonor what I represent. And that is that is the beautiful thing about how you roll. And that's how I roll. Nope. You're going to walk away and you're going to be like, that was a cool dude. Good work yeah. ethic, like solid cat. And, you know, like, and then yeah. I even ran into dudes that were like, man, I used to be prejudiced because everywhere, you know, in where I grew up, there was no <laughs> black people. So we just all hated black people. But you're pretty yeah. cool, man. And I'm like, thanks, dude. You know? so, and you start converting enough. people, which is really cool. OK, huh? so as as a woman, I thought that that would happen. But as it turns out, I, I think I scared a lot of guys. <laughs> yeah. I, it keeps coming back. Like the most common thing that I hear because I do have a fast wit and yeah. I feel like that's something that where I came from was a necessity. Mm -hmm. So I keep that with me, but it's turned into like, Oh, she can kind of be a little bit. Yeah. She's quick. She's aggressive. And yeah. I gotta, I gotta stay on my toes a little bit in a, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, you know, finding your audience too. Yeah. hundred percent. Point being this that they didn't expect it from a woman. And one of my one of my good friends actually sat me down because we were going through this op. Yeah. And I was landing jokes and I'm talking golden jokes. You're like, <laughs> is anyone recording this? <laughs> yes. And I was like, like, what is with yeah. these people? Like, somebody needs to hit them in the giggle dick or something. Like, yeah. this is gold. I'm giving you people Netflix official credit kind of a thing yeah. and he sat me down and he actually said a lot of people want and ask to have a dude in a woman's body but they don't understand what to do when it's actually there yeah 100 percent. And, and what they're actually asking for and i thought it was such an interesting flip to what i was told when yeah. they say i want equality yeah. and i didn't know what i was actually asking for I had no idea that vice versa. I had kind of become a dude in a chick's body over the course of all of these years. And then I got told it's because they, they're they kind of freaked out because they didn't really understand what they were asking for. And they asked for it. And now you're here. And it's a little weird. Well, it's it's it jams up your programming, especially if you were like, like I was raised by my mom to be a gentleman. And you have all this, you have biology that's like, I'm going to like protect women. And they're like gentle and like probably our moms do the biggest disservice for us sometimes when it comes to dating. Cause you're so like, eh, for because a look, what that slipper going. does, what yeah. that slipper does is straight violence. Yeah, right. <laughs> violence. <laughs> but so, you know, when a chick's like blasting back at you, you're like, like, do I like, do I, is it okay? Or are you going to change the rules? I mean, you're going to start crying because if me and you get into a thing and I win and you go and you whoop out your female card and cry or do anything weird, oh. I'm the bad guy. So it's like, we're not used to, no. and then no. probably they've experienced it once or twice where someone's like, pop, and then they're like, pop. And then all of a sudden the card comes out and they're like, ah, gosh, you know, so it's like, yeah, she got me. She and got yeah, some of them do it. It's like the black card, you know, like, oh, we're all cool till someone pulls out the black card and it's like, Dude, and I've been on details and watched it happen. And I'm like, bro, are you really doing this right now? Like, oh, wait, so I can't do each other every day of our lives. And now you're offended and you want to go complain to HR? Like, get out of here, you know? So, so I shouldn't do blackface then? No blackface. What was that? I shouldn't do blackface? No blackface. <laughs> Don't get crazy. <laughs> Yo, okay. So all right, you, we got some questions. We got to hit these questions. Okay, okay, okay. okay so so uh, when you start a detail, what are kind of, what's kind of your goal? Like, like in your mind, when you're kicking off a detail, like what type of stuff goes through your mind? Like, this is how I want this to be. This is how I want this relationship to be. This is what I want. Okay. To so I had two questions for you on that note that have changed in the last three years. Yes. Are we talking about team base or are we talking about solo? Let's talk about solo because everything else in the world is team based. Everyone scared okay. to talk about solo because you know it's I mean, oh my god i was actually just gonna say that i was literally just gonna say <laughs> that to you this morning when we were texting yeah. that there is something about our generation yeah. that we're really starting to push and break into a point where we have to go solo yeah yeah and it's it's a part of your career that you're gonna have to start doing those but nobody's really talking about it and i'm wondering if What's it's training you're talking about it well I wonder if it's because we're all kind of failing through it. Yeah. 
and that's hundred percent. People are failing forward without passing on the information because when you get to that level, you, you're not supposed to fail anymore. You're supposed right. to have everything locked down tight. You're supposed yeah. to have all of these things and your ducks in a row and be at the point where I've earned that. So yeah. you, you can't admit to it. Right. But there's a weird aura about it. But it's like our entire generation is collectively hitting that. Yep. together and nobody's talking about it and i know that some people are messing up because of how they're like changing the way that they teach mm, you know and like little little idioms in their classes are tra- yeah. changing a bit and it's like oh oh so we tried that one and it didn't work oh <laughs> good okay. okay well the evolution's good I, and the solo work i think part of the, the 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 reality is it's just you cannot offer the same amount of protection as you can when you have multiple agents so everyone's like you know, they're trying to figure out how to do this. And it's like, no, there's just certain times when, you know, if you don't make provisions and do things when this is just less coverage and to talk about it is like admitting that like, there might be some squiggly points and gaps and crazy things. And they know the internet's going to eat them up. But, you know, I don't, I will, I will, I'm I'm here to bring the realness to the game. So I was going to say, but it's so true because something's got to give. Yeah. And we are, you are only one person and the, the reality is you're one person and it's likely you've got more than one client that you're watching. Mm -hmm. So if it comes to solo work for me, you have to have your gear in order and you have to have your tools in order. And I, it wasn't long after you and I talked that I started doing more, more and more solo work where I was kind of stepping away from the advances and um, like talk about team drama, like left that, that's the t- I said what I said, mm-hmm. fight me on it. <laughs> um, like I'm hope the best for that team, but that ain't yeah. my tribe, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hope the best. Mm-hmm. So um, I started doing more solo work and I realized trying to herd kittens that it really comes down to your gear hmm. the, okay. and how well prepared you are with your gear and yeah. how fast you move, but also knowing knowing how to pace yourself. Hmm. Okay. That was the hardest part to learn because I'm trying to hit all of the notches that I hit when I have a team. Like usually you have somebody who could do background research on somebody or you have somebody that's assessing threats or you have an advanced person and then you have your team leaders and you have all of these different positions. Yeah. Well, yeah. now sugar, you are it. And look, I'm just going to call it with this one. Yeah. This, this may hurt some feelings, yeah. but I'm just going to say it because it is a reality for, for people coming out of military settings, yeah. especially the higher ops types of military settings, understand okay. that even in those settings, there were support teams. Yeah. There was an entire crew of support that gave you dossiers, that gave you lists, that it, so, you were past all of that information. The thing about EP that people need to realize, especially going into it, is you are now that intel person and you are the assaulter. Yeah, 100%. You, you don't have all of the support teams and you can't assume on your teammates that they are going to be picking up that slack. Or and your client's going to give you all the information even sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you, you really have to go on your own and you have to become a bit of a, your own PI. And like, I suggest that YouTube, how, how to be a PI, there are free ways to YouTube and not, you know, don't hold everything to the internet, but right. they have tips and tricks and stuff like that, that yeah. are worth looking at. And it's the same thing with the secret service. Yeah. Secret service works in group places so if you were going to say it but you're you beat me to it i was like you know and that's the same thing with and we don't stuff. look we yeah. don't weld shut manhole covers here oh. <laughs> yeah and we love i mean i'm not hating on them but their mission and execution is so different from the actual organic private security industry exactly. so when i see a lot of this stuff we're like oh you know prior you know whatever is teaching this whatever i'm kind of sometimes like i want to do that gets the short end of the stick, like he's a Marine. And literally they're like, 
you won and you're like, can I get a second agent? Oh, I saw this meme the other day that was so good. I think it was from the detail, um, my man's profile. And it was like mm-hmm. that scene from Breaking Bad when the, the you know, the, the the second guy, like the white guy, he's like, yeah. you can't get away with this. <laughs> <laughs> like, when your client says you only need one agent again, <laughs> like, you can't keep doing this. Because that's how you feel. And you're like, well, you two agents and they're like, yeah. So you'll go, <laughs> you know, and you're just sitting there like, okay, all right. But you anyway, man, please so, don't just don't throw a Starbucks trip into this on me. I would really appreciate it if we got from point A to point B, please. Right. Can we just go to that one place that we went that one time last Thursday? You know, the place and you're like, ah, yeah, yeah. While yeah. I'm driving, let me figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Do you remember that chef that we had? It was phenomenal. Yeah. Of course, <laughs> you know. Okay. So when when it comes down to working solo, solo, rolling solo. Okay. Let's, let's talk about that. And I think that before, before you even accept the contract, before you accept the contract, understand the scope of work you're getting yourself into. What are the expectations? And don't feel bad for confirming that. Yeah. There is a way to confirm it and shoot them an email and just flat out say, hey, just to confirm. So I'm understanding this correctly, yeah. that these are the points that we need to be hitting. These are the items that have the top priority. And these are the items that are less of a priority. Because right. I, And then you're transparent with them the whole way through. And yep. that level of communication allows them to give you more information. Yeah. But it, I think that being able to take a step back and offer that vulnerability to them also helps them understand that you are also only one person. But further than that, to to go further is look at the scope of work, understand the scope of work, confirm your scope of work, understand where your people skills lie. Because when you're running solo, you have to have people skills. Yeah, you're doing all It doesn't matter anymore. You can't get away with being big and bad. Like you ain't DMX, go bark at the client and tell me if you're working tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. You can't hide in the detail. And what you you said that was really good too is um, letting them see that you are just one agent and you do need to work a little bit harder and you do need to confirm these details is also beginning the conversation about why you need two details. It's passively two yeah. agents. It's passively starting that conversation. And, you know, yeah. and for me, the main thing with work and solo is I, you got to do your own, you have to get up and do your advanced work. So, you know, everything like you do not, do not show up on that detail when it's time to push and think you're just going to like wing it. the client and it's going to be okay. Don't do that to yourself. I do way more advanced work when it's going to be me solo. I, I aim to memorize all that stuff before I show up. By the time I see my client, I've probably been working three or four hours before I'm like, okay, oh, here's morning. a good question for you though. Here's a good question <laughs> for you. Cause I, how do you memorize it? What, what is your method for memorization when it comes to that kind of stuff? Yeah. Are you just constantly writing it down or are you rereading? What's mm-hmm. your method? Like taking notes? Yeah. So I have uh, some TBIs and dyslexia and all this stuff. So, so I'm well, bit, so do I. So do yeah, I. Yeah. Which, so which I have why to I work. say it because it's like, it's really, really hard yeah. when you, I have, you, you do that. It's hard. Yeah. I have to work. I have to physically do things in order to know them. Like there's no looking at maps and like memorizing things. I have a run sheet that I put together on my, uh, on my notes on my phone. And that's like my, all the information I need to know, everything I need to know it's in order. I've got all the links. I can just be like, click, boom, boom. And then my routes, I, sometimes I run my routes like three times because I just know once I get in the car with these clients and the fray starts and, you know, something happens, I run my routes that morning as well. So I can see exactly, and this is when you have this is when you have the luxury of time. Sometimes you get put in even crappier situations where you don't have the luxury. I was going to say I've got a funny um, story for you on that, <laughs> right? Uh, even routes at the hotel, I will walk those multiple times. So funny your story I, about that. Yeah, I know my deficiencies, and I'll walk all the I'll walk the whole entire hotel. My deficiencies are I don't remember uh, anything that I don't do very well, and I don't remember numbers and <laughs> and, and really? names very well. So that run sheet is really what saves my life and everything's just a click away and I keep moving. 
And I know there's guys that are going to be like, well, what if your cell phone goes down and freaking, you know, and there's an EMP. Yep. 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 Well, that's why okay. I run the routes. Okay. So I, I actually well. several notes, several notes on that one, because I cannot stand that <laughs> mentality that right. the, I'm going to what if it to death. Well, you know what? What if my grandmother had a dick? Well, then yeah. she's my grandmother. What if grasshoppers okay. have a machine guns guy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I do have a backup phone and I do have GPS devices with me but, if we're going all out, you know? But, but here's but. here's the other half of that, which is another part. A lot of a lot of agents can't afford to do that. Yeah. They can't afford to do the extra cell phone and they can't afford to do a lot of those things that we've kind of acquired over the years. Over the years, yeah. And it, it you really got to throw a huge investment into running solo before you run solo. It's true. Because it does come down to a lot of gear that help you maintain any kind of um, like oh, security just be robust presence. Enough. Yeah. And it, you know, and I, I, the same way I have a list, but there's also so much that's running at one time that yeah. it's also hard to, you know, maintain all of it. There's, there are going to be things that fall by the wayside. There okay. are going to be certain things that are going to maintain a higher priority than others, which is why it's so important to talk to your client before you roll solo. Like mm -hmm. I need to know what your priorities are. And the reason I need to know, is so I can prioritize my presence where I need to put security implementations in where I can't fully protect something with my presence and I don't have a body to put into that place. And how do I maintain coverage in that? So it's a lot of stuff that your clients also don't think about, but oh, I'm trying to remember, there was, there was another thing that you had said. Um, it was one of them was, Oh my gosh. Okay. So this, this actually happened to me a couple of times recently when it comes to running routes, here's mm -hmm. what sucks. Sometimes I, you get flown on a plane and you land somewhere that you cannot advance. Like I, I was sitting, 100%. let's just say I was sitting on the south, south end of a country mm -hmm. and we surprisingly had to go to the north side of the country mm -hmm. and hopped on a private jet to do so. So I land with them and now I'm the driver and I have. I've never been here before. I have no point of contact down here. I, this was a last minute thing. I can't run the advance. I can't, I don't know what restaurant we're going to. They just tossed me the GPS and like, maintain your composure. I just dropped a field note on that. You have to do the duck, man. Above the surface, you are stoic. You're handling your, you're actually, you're relaxed. You're having a good time, but in your head, you are working that freaking Rubik's cube. You are working the equation. <laughs> and you, you, you get conditioned to it. Like my, fortunately, my first client I was with for seven years, it was just like that. We're on a private jet. And he's like, oh, is that the Canary Islands? Let's go to the Canary Islands. Yeah. We're, like, yay, yay. we're like trying to advance everything. And we're like, yeah, you know, but. Where are we going to sit up, again? Fuck, everything's yeah, absolutely and, booked out. No. Yeah. And if you can just, you if you can really just, be grounded while those changes happen and flow and get used to it. That is really, I think, one of the keys to rolling solo is thinking ahead, being able to flow with the changes and staying grounded. So your client looks over at you after they throw that curveball and you're like, Roger that, sir. All right, we'll get you there. Good to go. So um, I had a I had a medical thing happen and I was telling my clients, um, don't panic unless I panic. Yeah. And if I'm cool and I'm cracking jokes nice. and and everything's good and dandy, then yeah. then we're all good. But if I say to you in any type of a serious tone, we need to leave. Yeah. Or something's going on. And yeah. I tell you we need to go. I'm not playing. Yeah. Then you know, and and I had clients who didn't believe me on that until yeah. push came to shove and we had a medical incident. And I was like, nope, sorry. I sorry tough titties we're going i don't care yeah this is what it I is you could fire me at up there at the fbo right? yeah. yeah you can fire me over there but uh until then we're gonna stop at the medical and so and so needs to get checked out like yeah yeah but um i think when it comes to rolling solo you have to invest in yourself 
you have to also invest in knowing where your strengths are and knowing where your weaknesses are. Yep. And you have to maintain transparency with your client because 100%. as soon as they feel like they're no longer informed, even if you're over informing, you rather be told, I don't need that much information than be told like, I don't know what this person's doing yeah, because like, now you're going to get called what back. Yeah. Yeah. But your so, gear is, is what's going to cover whatever faults that you have, wherever you're lacking in coverage, that's where gear comes into play. So and what gear, what gear are you talking about? Let's uh, to that a little bit. Some cheat codes. What's up? Okay. So, and I, I know that I sent this to you on the, on the list. So like, for those who don't know, Byron and I have a list. We ain't kidding. When it comes to rolling solo and stuff, everything yeah. gets put down in a list. Yes, because <laughs> death, I ain't got, you know. Death by, <laughs> death by notes. Yeah. Um, there are things that exist now. Look for um, small apartment savers. Like when you're, Dudes, get on Pinterest. Okay. There's a reason the Amazon boxes keep showing up. It's because it works. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the algorithm is real. <laughs> and it works to my advantage. Yeah. It, it, it is real yeah. and it works. But look, look at things that go for like small apartments, um, things that are in dorm rooms, security for dorm rooms, because those are the things that you can use in hotel rooms. They have, and I wish I had it out right now. Um, it's still packed away in my box, but they have out right now a um, mobile door ring that you can just take a ring or one of the blink systems. You can latch it on to their, you know, Wi-Fi. You pay the five ninety nine for the premium Wi-Fi access to the room, and then you can slap that on the door, and then you get the same properties and protection that you get with a ring, and that's a single access point. So you can provide coverage and have a body that's there that's protecting. And I suggest putting something, a small camera, something you can bring with you, use the hotel's Wi-Fi to your advantage. Yeah. And they have things like VPNs and Wi-Fi blockers and all of those like sneaky poopy things that you can get on Amazon for very, very cheap. Right. <laughs> and then you could set it up inside of your hotel rooms and you could set it up on the doors so you can see who's actually going in and out. Yeah. And I say that to say that, uh, to say that know, know how to operate in hotels. And yeah. one of the things that you and I were talking about that we listed is adapting to the newer level of this industry. Yeah. It, the time has past for to not adapt it, okay. it, it you can no longer not be a fan of technology you can no okay. longer find excuses to be not like, I don't do that stuff or I don't yeah it's like yeah. no bro like we, we no, have no you you can't do it not, <laughs> not anymore if you want to be effective and frankly that's actually a huge stopping point for me when it comes to people <laughs> is the inability to adapt yeah. if they're not capable of Carrying something that's not a 1911 or something that may be a smaller caliber or right. something, you know, things that alter to the job. If there's a lot of pushback when it comes to that, and if, yeah. I see it as an inability to adapt to where EP currently is. Yeah. And there are several things that you should have, you know, like have white pages. There are free things. Know how to do a reverse search. Yeah. There are simple things that you could do on your own to set yourself up for success. Yeah. How, know what airlines that they're taking and know what, download the apps for them. Yeah. And, it, you know, do that for like other countries and just shit like that, man. Yeah. The, um, the, the thing about adaptation with executive protection is we protect people at the speed of life and it's all relative to who they are and their life. And so, mm -hmm. you know, you get on one account, it's this way, you get on another account, it's that way. And then the tools have to evolve along with that. 
to fit that person's life at the speed of their life. So it's like, oh, I got my favorite 1911 and I call it Excalibur and I always keep it with me all the time. It's like, nah, dude, yo, I, this is me. Sometimes I, I feel like when I'm about to make content for EP, sometimes I'm like, should I put on a suit and like play the game and like, look how they all think I look. And I'm like, no, no, this is what I work in. I'm like, my clients are like, I want you to look like a dude. And if you wear a suit, I'll fire you. And like, I want to walk around and not draw attention, you know, like, and so I got to look like a dude and it's, yeah. that's a lot of the reality of the game now. So, I mean, you got some companies that are like ultra strict jizzy wit companies that would, <laughs> you guys know, we all know who they are, but, and just make you do it, you know, but you go walking yeah. down the street in LA in a suit, man. The, oh, you're stick out like a sore thumb. Okay. They're going to eat you alive. The paparazzi, you will, you just because you're there, your client's going to get blown up. You'll be all over TMZ. I don't see, I'm not going to say anything, but like generally, I haven't been there so far because I've been lucky. We're just going to say that. Okay. <laughs> okay. A, a few things. A few things. Think of the if, devil, he'll appear. If, if you're working with celebrities, invest in like some, go down to REI and invest in some reflective shit that bikers use on the side of the road and just put some strips around them or something because you can, you can put that stuff on your skin and some double-sided tape and stick it out in front of them and stop some Papa and Nazis. They're, they're, okay. Wow. It, I, I went there. That, I didn't know about that one. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I love cheat codes, cheat codes, y'all. Yeah. Look, uh, that, this stuff came from experience. Yeah. <laughs> That's and, awesome. And like ladies get the option of a purse, but sometimes it doesn't always work. And yeah. I, I think that dudes need to have like some kind of a client satchel or something. They do. Know? We don't call them purses, but yeah, we got our <laughs> some kind of like a, li- a little satchel. Oh, yeah. But yeah, but a lot of them do it like I'm going to have it in black multi camp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, bro. Come We're doing EP. We got it. We, I mean, it depends on your client. If your client wants you to look freaking, you know, 10, 9, 10, 22, then, you know, but generally, generally you really kind of need to look, depending on your client, you kind of need to look as much like, and we can get into the urban camouflage thing, but actually real yes. quick, you need to look as much like the environment. You need to be camouflaged. You don't want to draw attention just because you're jacked and tan and wearing like, you know, you're dressing like you're doing a Blackwater contract, you know, like yeah. that time also like- has passed. I think. Stop with the tactical tuxedo. Yeah. So easy exactly. does it. Let, put hang the Solomons up, leave them there yeah. for range day. Yep. They'll be fine. They'll be and fine with the for a little bit. You were talking about delegation when working solo. Okay. Yes. So <laughs> what I mean by delegation working solo is important. Look, there there are people around you who are always going to be there to help you. Mm-hmm. And I understand that there's only so much information that you can give out to people, but there's also a tactful way to do that. And generally these people travel in packs. So don't be afraid to ask the people within that pack for help. Like if they have an assistant, if they have some kind of a TA or some, some other point of contact for the mundane stuff. And you can even show, show it to your client as a form of respect. Hey, there are certain things logistically that I understand you have a lot on your plate. Do you have another point of contact that maybe I could just ask all of these questions to, and then I'll come to you for the very personal and important stuff. But use those people to your advantage. And then when you're going places, it's, you know, talking talking to people to help get help. Yeah. What I mean by that is, you go and you find the security person and you find their head of security Exactly. and you talk to them and say, Hey, I've got this VIP, but you, you stay straight up with them, stay transparent with them because that's the best thing that you can do. Hey, I've got this client, this VIP, they're kind of a high maintenance person, or maybe they're a low maintenance person, but I want to make their experience grand and, I'm going to need your help to do that. And I want their experience while they're in your hotel to shine and the helping me helps you. And, you know, you talk them up, yep. go down there and talk to those people and say, Hey, if they order a meal, do I go straight to the room service? And if you're candid with them and you're transparent with them and you're asking for help nine times out of 10, people want to help you. And maybe I've had it happen where they've given me a direct line to the chef Mm -hmm. and it, it solves so many little issues, but knowing the PA will also help you with travel information. Hey, they're talking to me about X, Y, and Z. 
just so you're aware and now you can start planning for those things. Wherever you're at, verbally hire people and ask for help and tell them that I'm rolling solo, but it'll make everything else look magnificent. Blow it out of the water. Who cares? Who cares? You're there anyway. It's temporary Uh, there anyways. Yeah, no, you're talking about one of my favorite topics, social dynamics of executive protection. I'd be recruiting fools. And my spiel is generally like, hey, you know what? Like, hey, I've got, this is my situation. We're on the same team. We're both here to make sure they have a great experience. I'm in your house. You guys know this thing. I'm going to need your help to do that. Pay them respect and honor. They will pay it back. Do everything you can to cake them up and give and, and tip them. So when you come back, they're like, yo, that was that one dude. And create allies everywhere you go with relationships, obviously, when it's respect. Uh, safe and, and things like that. But it is a superpower to be able to create these allies. Creating an ally out of the PA is like one of the most important things that you better figure out how to do because that PA will smoke you. I don't care if you're a Navy SEAL. Whatever the thing is, you'll just be gone. Yeah, uh, no, so really, that is you, your, you're going to be a broke ass Navy SEAL is what you're <laughs> yeah. going to be if you play with the PA. And generally, it's some little twinked out Starbucks queen, okay? Yeah. If you yeah. want to make friends with the PA, Starbucks gift cards, find out what their coffee order is. Yeah, Have they eaten breakfast? Yeah, take and care sometimes- of them. They will take care of you. And it's literally a cheap, it will increase. This is a tip that will increase your survivability in the executive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God bless it, us wherever he is. It's, anyway. it's so true, though. It's so it true. You have to make friends with those people. And that's where being a people person comes into play because a lot of a lot of things that I've witnessed personally is they don't know how to dial back the ego enough to ask for help or to say what they're asking for is help. And I would even say, even if I always say make allies, man, just recruit, build your team, all the different spheres of relationship you can have in a place supporting your mission that you're also making them look like a rock star. Yeah. You create these win-wins, you flow through there when you can't, as often as you can, you drop those white envelopes on them. That's something you should figure out with your client before you get there. And they will treat you like the celebrity that you want your client, that white glove service you want. You'll be parking your car up top, taking the keys, be bopping over to your hotel. While everyone will be yeah, taking it, you'll be getting yeah. escorted on the security of the, the staff elevators. Yeah. And, and you guys will be looking at each other being like, yeah, we're doing this. You know, you know? and the client will just know. be just, you know, going. So the other half of that, though, which um, I completely forgot about until uh, you were just talking about it, about like, you know, letting your client know that there's probably going to be some handshake money that's going to be going down. Yeah. Um, sometimes it, you're just going to have to eat that cost. I was going to say, I was like, should I say this? Like, yeah, exactly. Because you know what? You're a professional and you need the detail to go good. And yeah. So, you sometimes you're just going to have to eat the cost, but it's that the happens. price of doing business and look at it as an investment in yourself and your own performance as a professional. And your own brand. Because when you show up back there, with another client or that same client, those people are going to be like, this dude's a G, roll out the red yep. carpet. And, yep. you know, a lot of clients yeah. understand the game. Leave enough meat on the bones for absolutely everybody to pick at it. That's, that's how you re- repeat your business. So one thing that we were talking about is, by the way, yeah. for everybody who's uh, tuning in, yeah. we're, <laughs> dressing for your clients should henceforth be referred to as the real urban camouflage. I dig it. I dig it. That's that's the real urban camouflage. Right. If you can blend in and um <laughs> I and I had sent you recently a photo yeah. of no joke. This is really how it goes. As a woman, I have to be in a dress. This requires a skirt. And now I'm required to carry. So how do you do it? There we go. A I've level been of adaptation. Right. And where you can't exactly put a kydex in a skin tight dress. Okay? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> you know what? I I'll tell you. I'm gonna I'm I'll, I'm gonna grab yeah, it. Be right back. Do it. I actually have a security box. Yeah. A no bullshit box with like all of my shit. It's just savage. That's what's up. I dig it. Faraday cage. Yep. Yep, got mine right in. 
Okay, that's the stuff that I wanted to have. Awesome. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, how do you hide that in a? Oh, I guess you have a jacket. Yeah, a real big sweater or a shawl. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I swear to God, and that's how you wear it in a dress. Yeah, because you can't put it on your lower body. And I've seen some chicks do like a like an in between the leg. Yeah, drop. but what they don't what they don't talk about is it makes you waddle. It'll make you waddle really, really, really funny. You, you, you can't walk like a lady. You yeah. gotta think that one through. You gotta be able to still present like a woman. Right. Be a lady. You're Not a lady first and foremost. <laughs> and it, you're you can't be walking walking with a model. So oddly enough, I saw a couple of these when I was motorcycling. And yeah. a lot of people were using them to hold their cell phones and to hold their wallets and stuff like that. And I was like, right. that's actually that's not a bad idea. If you're yeah. so there are styles that are out there now in the motorcycle market. If you know where to look, like again, there's an EP, your gear is an EP direct. You pull right. your gear from other things. Yep. So it's like this may be a shooting rig, but in two weeks I may have one that fits my body better for, for that's from a motorcycling company. Yep. You know, and that's the thing with EP. That's well, and back on real quick for five eleven. <clears throat> some some props to them because they now have clothes that look like civilian clothes. And like when I shop, like these five eleven pants, you know, yeah. these are just jeans. They're just jeans. And I look like a dude wearing some jeans, but they're stretchy. And I got extra cool pockets in the back that you can't yeah. see, you if, know, if so it's it works, always looking for it, civilian stuff. That's, that's tactical, practical. Yeah. If it <laughs> works, so don't knock it. If it works, right. This, this becomes the reality, but at the same time, did I train on the range with this? Yes. Did I dry fire with it? Yes, absolutely. Went down to the range threw a stupid goodwill skirt on yeah. and put this dang thing on. So I had no other option, but to use it. Right. And I know it sounds extreme to like dress how you, how you work when you go to the range. So for, for some people, it sounds weird because sometimes I show up in a very thick wedge or a very thick heel say. or yeah. something like that. But I have to blend with my clients and there is an expectation that is upheld by not not just my appearance, but by my performance. Yep. So I have 100%. to be able to prepare and perform in that. 100%. So go to the range and do it. You can dry fire in the quiet of your own home and never have to admit to anybody you were in heels. <laughs> 100%. No, I love it. That's the truth. But, but and that, that practice, that, reality. that so, practice is what makes it legitimate and, and makes it not just a good idea. No, I know I can perform in this. I know what I can do in this. And at the end of the day, if we're not able to use the tool of violence or the, our hard skills or medical, any of those hard skills to protect our clients, then we are just personal assistants. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll fight, I'll fight anybody on that. And, and at the same time, when you go to the range to train for those things, restrict yourself to only what you would have when you're on the job. Yeah. And there is no gun belt there. Your med pack isn't right behind you on your gun belt and you need to remove all of those things. That's why I say, yeah, I'll get like a $2 Goodwill skirt and throw something like that on because that, if I'm going to be in it, that's my reality. And I need to take away the ability to fall back on something like that. Yep. And, and continue to I, push. I just did an in doc with a, a group of dudes and one dude showed up with his Safari land, Jimmy McNigler. And I was like, bro, you got to shoot this real deal concealed, homie. Like, I need you to shoot. I need you to perform the way you were. That's what I said in the directions. And now I can see you do it. And then, you know, and you can tell he was really uncomfortable drawing concealed. And I was like, okay, well, this, this, this in doc is to expose you to you and you to me because we have to be legit, you know? And so it was a very great learning experience for him and for me, but you guys, Real deal can like like the second the uh, USPSA uh, shooting competition said you can draw from concealment you can you can carry uh, uh, appendix that's the only way I shoot competitions now because that's yeah. how I have to perform and I'm not I mean I'm now obviously if you want to play the game and do this stuff I respect that too but for me that's part of my training regimen so yeah. I'm up in there real deal concealed with a yeah. t-shirt 
and some pants. I don't mind getting dirty. I'll wear like some cry pants or whatever because I think they're they got knee pads and I have to pick up stuff. <laughs> oh, you're not gonna <laughs> duck waddle it. You're not gonna do yeah, that. Yeah, you're not gonna pick up more, but. But my CCW is my CCW, the way I roll in the day, man. So I love that. That mm-hmm. is a good and cheat code. Same thing with when it comes to men. Just just the same. Maybe an appendix carry is not something that's proper for your body. Some yeah. dudes have a belly. And just because it's what's going on online or a red dot is what's happening online and those things are in trend doesn't mean that you have to adapt those things yep. uh, if they're not comfortable for you. Yeah. And knowing your body and your own limitations and then what the scope of your work is, yeah. maybe it's time that you start packing a SIG and you put the Glock down. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, whatever that means to the individual, but really don't be afraid to venture outside of the realm to find something that might work for you a yeah. lot better. Maybe a side okay. carry is better. Maybe the appendix is better. Maybe behind your back, try it all and see what works. Yeah. You know, yeah. don't don't and limit be yourself versatile. and be versatile because you might have to dress some, in something different. That's one of the reasons I started wearing vests a lot when I wear suits is because then I can still carry appendix, you know, yeah. and that was like, that's my little cheat code, you know, that in the great. Yeah. Um, yeah. But OK, and then my so- body. I me wearing a weapon at five, uh, you know, five o'clock with a suit on I got them wide hips. You know what I'm saying so I it just can print. And so I was like, how can I do this? And so you work it out for you, you know, and what size gun is this, you know, that I have to do this with? These are the questions. Funny enough, I feel like that really makes the difference between um, civilian people who came up uh, as civilians with an EP versus people who are military prior and how they respond in EP because everybody seems to fall back onto something. And people who uh, within the military, all of us fall back to the one thing that we all universally know, which is what you learn in basic training. And that's a very specific weapon system. It's a very specific operating method and so it's easy to adapt adapt the notion that yeah. there has to be a one specific way whereas sure. people who are civilians were never whopped over the fucking head the with that. Dog, dogma of you're yeah. never walk backwards and all the stuff that was like hammered into their heads you know yeah yeah but so as a result some of those people end up being some of the most proficient out of the box yep. things that you have and yep. the most proficient on the range as yeah. a result of that. So it's definitely pulling back the ego a little bit to open the scope up, not only to military personnel, but understanding that when you have military personnel, that you will have to break down some of those barriers with them. Yeah. Oh, with military and law enforcement, because they already Absolutely. think they know sometimes you got to empty the cup on them. And then so, you get the civilian guy who's like currently training. And then he does the best at my end doc because he's like, he's like yeah. currently, oh yeah, I train with these guys and those guys. And I go to MMA a couple of times, three times a week. And, and then the military guy's like, yeah, well, you know, I went to war and, da, da, da. and yeah. then out there. And then he's like, well, I never shot handguns in the Marine Corps. And I'm like, dude, well, we carry handguns, bro. Meanwhile, the silly villains over there are like, yeah, I go to the range and I train myself. <laughs> and, I'm like, and he's beating them. And I'm like, guys, you're not going to Valhalla, man. You guys can get this thing six feet. <laughs> Um, okay. So really, one of the things that I told you about rolling solo was that security camera. Yeah. So the mobile security camera, this is it. Okay. And then this is the door half. It <laughs> literally, you can tighten it and loosen it. Yeah. Slides. You put a ring in it, lock it in and it slides on the side of the door and it nice. just hangs out right above. And it has the industrial door. Look, I'm not sponsored by this company. This is just a cheap Chinese knockoff Amazon company thing. Yeah. But it's an investment in solo work that yeah. will save your butt yeah. so much, so yeah. much. Yeah. It, because everywhere you go is going to have Wi-Fi, especially mm-hmm. if them people have teenagers. Trust me, they look for Wi-Fi. Yeah. And Good or point. you have your own uh, Skyroam or whatever device you use as well uh, yeah. to roll with, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> there's ways to have that internal as well now this is good they, no not very many guests whip out actual uh pieces of hardware i gotta get i need to make that like a question like what hardware do you suggest for the game because i know people dig that Dude, uh, I, i'm i'm all about gear because i i think that gear is what's going to make your life significantly easier 100%. and if it, it's also more information is better 
hundred percent. Even if you're, even if you're working in a team, then maybe having something else in place and using technology to put something else in place will help free up another guy down the road. And you yeah. never know how much use that that can have later on. Yeah. hundred percent. You got some squiggly stuff in here about bypassing doors and hotels and the infamous lock picking. Oh, yes. <laughs> So um, skills and, and skill set, just basic things to train for. Yeah, yeah. It's it's the field craft that people really aren't talking about because the truth, unfortunately, is that we aren't stopping bullets and we aren't jumping into knife fights every day. So while there is a time and a place, for, right? <laughs> I wish. Right. While, right. while there is a time and a place, um, there are... <laughs> There are other methods that you might need to adapt. And when, going back to what we were talking about earlier about adaptation, adaptation into technology is a huge one. Okay, yeah. so lock, lock picking is one of those very good skills to have. And it it is a perishable skill though. So yeah. you need to stay training on things like that and look for classes. And if you can't afford a class, there are YouTube classes. You can go down to Home Depot, find a lock anywhere, and you can find different utensils to, to break into it. And look, I'm not I'm not advocating B and E, but what I'm saying is that sometimes you've got a client that really needs to go somewhere or you really need to see what's behind the other side of the door. Yeah. And I say that with an example. I was at a hotel yeah. and it was an, a very, very, very old hotel and yeah. they operate on a tunnel system. And I don't know how many people know this, but several hotels and it very commonly, they do operate on tunnel systems. Yep. New so, York, London, these old money places. Mm -hmm. Yes, it, it is very, very common internationally. So also knowing what kind of locks that they have. So, and a lot of them are the simple old school styles, but go around and check the doors on things and see how far you can get, see what's underneath there. And yeah. you need to know because you're going to know a path of escape. You're going to need to know where the threats are coming from. And if you've got an entire city that's essentially living under your hotel with all of these people that are constantly moving in and out of unmonitored locations, that's probably something that you want to know, at least no access points. So yeah. having a skill like lock picking comes in handy. And I, I was going into the underground tunnels mm -hmm. and it paid off later knowing where these threats were coming from, because mm -hmm. look, walking around the, the same hotel, there aren't that many cameras. A lot yeah. of these places can't, and their priority is customers. Right. It's not security. So they lack on the security. That's generally the first thing that goes. So yeah. you don't have camera systems on every floor. You only have them at primary locations. What kind of camera systems are they using? Uh, does How long does it record for? Are they actually, you know, like. Well, and watching, also like. I've watching had I had a client get, I had a uh, buddy was telling me a story about how he had a client stuck on the roof. They went up to the roof and mm -hmm. the door locked behind him and he was able to pick the lock and open the door. And he was blooded to the client. The client was like, my guy is MacGyver and da, 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 da. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there are a number of doors you're going to have to get in and out and the house is going to be like, yeah, it's totally cool. And then the door locks. Or, oh. and then as, as far as these tunnel systems as well, when you make contact and you recruit that local security director of the hotel, get your walkthrough on and yeah, yeah. And get, get access to these areas, get his permission to have access to these areas. If you don't get permission, walk through these areas, like, you know what you're doing, because generally you absolutely can, if you just walk with authority. And, yeah. And um, we talked about that last time. If you, yeah, you can go no. anywhere with the right amount of confidence. Yeah. And people are just like, Oh, and it's, I mean, you get inoculated. I feel perfectly at home walking through the back of a hotel walking through all the hallways. And I just, cause it's part of my world in every hotel yeah. I go to. So get that. Um, oh yeah. And don't be a stranger to technology. I think that uh, going forward, what I mean by that is be able to run a, a reverse search. Yeah. So you should be able to type in a name. I, I and again, this is something that happened recently with, uh, with the, one of the gentlemen that I was uh, working with. Yeah. 
you should be able to type in a name and understand what kind of a reverse search you're getting back, what kind of information you need to be looking for, what kind of associates you need to be looking for. And to say that cybersecurity is not a huge factor in our world, it is no longer a sector on its own. It is a sector that has crossed into absolutely every yeah. platform and version of our industry. Any of our existence. It, yep. There, you can't play like you don't know how Twitter works or how Instagram works, especially when they have kids and yep. kids are posting pictures of where they're at yep. and you have, a, they don't understand that your high price clientele can't be having things like that happen. Yep. So not just conversations with the kids, but how do you monitor that? And maybe that's information that you collect up front when you talk to your client, Hey, can I get your social media accounts, yep. not access to them? I just need to, to be aware so that I can cycle through comments and see if there are any active threats, but yep. stay transparent with them. And then, you know, now you're looking at all of these old things and then that's how we've buzzed stalkers, you know, yep. their exes and exes that they, these people have completely forgotten about yep. and, and had no idea that it was that person. Yeah. And that's offensive security operations. I always mm -hmm. talk about that. You know, and if you have the luxury of having like an RSD, they can run those digital patrols for you and kick you info too. If you're out there in the field, if you're that lucky, you uh, but knowing what's going on with that digital footprint and that digital behavior can help you stay ahead of the game. Okay, we're about to get, we're about to get ambushed by a rash of people because oh boy, just checked in at the da 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 da. Like I'll mm -hmm. follow those people from ghost accounts and set up notifications when those things happen. Yeah. Um. And so that's that's huge. Understanding the yeah. digital the digital footprint and behavior of your client. Um, let's take a little, little change of direction into more of the female stuff real quick for the ladies. Yeah. Um, I get this question a lot um, in uh, when I do lives and things like that, but what would you say about can females be successful in this industry? Yes. Yes, you can. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Um, don't be dumb. <laughs> <laughs> we had uh jackie oh man she just she did that netflix vid, uh, movie close jackie davis at the um at the ep forum she's like top female agent in the uk and she opened ah, up a presentation yeah. Yeah. with she said it, but she's like, don't F your clients. <laughs> That's what she says. <laughs> you know, I was like, Yes, yes. Uh, she just went and said it, you know. Just Say it, please and thank. Don't be <laughs> yeah. dumb. But I Don't get calls all the time. Well, not all the time, but not infrequently. I get calls of dudes being like, "Hey, man, do you know any good female agents? We need we need a female. I need a solid female agent." I'm like, "Yo, bro. Uh, okay, well, and I find but why? So <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly because there's less competition. Anyways, I should let you speak on it. But if you can be solid in this game. And you gain traction and you set, you get solid street credit. You get pulled up to the top in my experience from what I've seen pretty quickly. If you can stay out of the trouble and there's a lot of pitfalls. This is a different there game are. for you guys. There are. But anyways, let's speak on it. Okay. So obviously I said, don't be dumb. Yep. But they're one of the pitfalls. One of the common things that I see happening with females and look, I had it happen to me too. Okay. Oh, early on yeah, in my no. career. <laughs> yeah. early on in my career. Um, you come across, you know, guys, people, and people who are teammates who this is the first time that you're interacting with somebody who actually understands your life, understands your lifestyle, and understands who you are or what you're interested in, and accepts that they are different than the norm for a female. So it's very easy to be, you know, hearts in the eyes when it comes to that. And, and very much, um, um, like fall in love with the teammate, like bodyguard or something like yeah. that. It's, it's very easy to go full bodyguard as a woman. Um, mm -hmm. because as a woman it's in this industry and in this game, you don't necessarily get dates. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then that's, okay. that's that's just calling it out for what it is because it's very hard to explain to a man, like for me, what I do for a living. 
Yeah. And I understand that it can come off as intimidating and I don't think it is. I try and, and be as candid as I can with it, but it doesn't make it any less of a reality. My reality is there's tactical gear all over my house. I yeah. look for ways to sneak into things. And, yeah. you know, it's very much like, like, God forbid I ever get to be a stalker because pff, let me tell you, I'd be one to be afraid of. Yeah. <laughs> But as a woman, it's very easy to get caught in those traps where you're finally accepted um, for the trade that you love and that you enjoy. Mm -hmm. And my advice to women that are coming into that is it's not avoid everything at all costs and don't live your life. It's just be aware of it. Be aware that that is a factor. So maybe you need to reevaluate you know, yeah. how you're addressing things like, you know what, maybe if I'm finding an, an attraction to so-and-so, maybe remove yourself from the situation. Yeah. I'm going to go over here. And I say that and like, my experience was that when I first started, yeah, it, it's mate and I, you know, yeah. like it, we were a thing and we had a relationship for several years yeah. and, you know, like, Unfortunately, things happen. If if we all had a, a good relationship, we'd still be in it. Right, right. But right. I say that those things aren't a factor. That is, as a woman, something that I had to learn. Yeah. That well, and it's it, not it that yeah. level of of acceptance that's there. But just be aware of it and understand that that is a factor, and you know, wave at it as it goes by. Yeah. Well, and it it goes both ways. I just you know. Dudes get yeah. snapped. Dudes fall in love with the the clients, assistants, and stuff like that. Some oh, all the time. Dudes all have the done time. it. Like it, it's one of those like no one you never never do this, but everyone ends up doing it. Um, so, and, so to say that it's not a reality and to not address it would I feel like would to be a disservice. Yeah, and you, you spend know? all this time with these people, working with these people, your teammates, and also the royal court or the entourage, depending on what terminology you use, and even the client. But. Um, it's natural to start to have affection for these people because you're covering each other's backs. You're working together. You're doing late hours together. You're struggling together. Mm -hmm. Like a team of dudes, ha you have affection for your dudes. You know, you can, you can yeah. depend on you those, take those out and you turn them into like uh, the other stop is at sex. The same type of thing almost happens organically. So you got to be aware of that. And then you just got to understand the life cycle of that relationship might be the life cycle of your time there. Exactly. Like that exactly. Flag. Which is why being aware of it is so important. Yep. You know, don't don't fall into the trap. Just be aware of it. It's it's maintaining professionalism and maintaining a professional working relationship. That yep. that's what it is. And then you just move on with your life. But as far as being successful within this industry, you're a woman. You're yeah. you're a lady. First and foremost, you are a lady and you should behave and act accordingly. Don't right. bring your femininity down in order to try right. and blend in or yeah. to try and be a dude in any way because frankly you already stand out so you might as you didn't get hired and brought in to, to be, be a dude what everyone else has yeah. about, because they've already got dudes they've already got them there you got hired and brought in to be a woman and to yeah. be the woman in the field so Good embrace advice. that and and double down on that yep and to be successful is you have to be above board yeah, you, you have twice to, as smart, you, twice as you have to be above board and you have to understand that it's going to come with some long nights that you will be, you know, bottom of the totem pole for a minute and you have to be absolutely resilient. Don't yeah. let things get you down. It <laughs> resiliency is going to go across the board and yeah. everybody's going to get checked. Everybody's going to get tested. And how much shit are you willing to deal with and willing to endure for your own success? To have what you are. Yep. 100%. And that's, that's just the game. And it's the game for the dudes too. When they're like, Oh, I was, you know, this retired law enforcement, Navy, so whatever. Okay, cool. Maybe you might have to start on the reds team. You know, you might have to cut your teeth and prove to us that you're legit before we bring you up. And as a female, I, I look at it the same way, you know, like, okay, one, what you said, which was awesome, which was like, do what you do good. You know, like you're there because you can go places we can't go. Uh, I can be a much more overt security presence just by my presence. Things are not going to happen. As a female, you might have to be a more subversive, evasive thinking ahead like, oh, looks like something might happen. I need to just move this person. I need to just get ahead of this. I need to yeah. you know, call in my some assets. I need to stay ahead of it because I'm not as physically potent as a 240 pound Byron. 
you know, yeah. so like, yeah, you, know, yeah, you got some weight on me there. You, got some weight <laughs> you on know, me. like, so you just so play your your game, team. use your, use your tools. Yeah. You and know. know your team, know where your strengths and weaknesses are and admit to actually having some weaknesses. Cause let's be honest, that. you, you're a lot bigger Absolutely. than I am. I, yeah. I, I understand. I can have as much of an intimidating presence as I want to have. And I could be as snappy and ratchet as I want to be. That doesn't change the reality of the situation. It doesn't change the reality that when somebody looks at you versus looking at me, like they feel different. They're going to feel a whole lot different. (laughs) They're going to feel a whole lot different. And because it's like, they're going to look at you and be like, I'm definitely going to get my teeth put in the back of my head. And then they look at me and they're like, I'll probably get my teeth. Well, they're they're gonna do. I'm probably gonna get my teeth knocked back in my head, but it'll probably be when I'm asleep at night. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You know, like yeah. like it's just it's it's and, it's very different, but yeah. it's true. And you have to know your strengths and weaknesses. Yep. So look at different routes of how you're gonna move your client accordingly. Yeah. And don't yeah. be shy about it. And there are advantages to to both, you know, like, and and disadvantages. Some environments I can't walk into without everyone looking at me and being like, what's he doing here? Like, why is this? Like, I was at a school event the other day and everyone's just like, and and I'm waiting for them to do it. I know they're going to do it. So how you doing? So whose kid's yours? And one of the times I got so <laughs> lucky, there was one, the one other pick, black kid in the, the universe happened to be standing kid. next to me. And I look over at him and I give him a nod. And he's like, gives me a nod. <laughs> <laughs> the black thing works. And then I'm like, yeah, I give, and then I look over at the parent and I'm like, we're good. And they're like, okay, okay, okay. But I can't do that. Now, you know, you go walk into that school. No one's going to think twice. They're going to be like, yeah, oh, nice. somebody's mom or something. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, no, you I'm know. just a cousin. I'm just a cousin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're like, so who are you here for? And I'm like, oh, here we go. And as I walk through the, it's like that Riddick, you know, whatever, perfect black movie. Everyone's just like staring at me as I walk through the Yes. You know, and I'm like smiling and being as nice as I can. But, you know, then they come up one by one. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, my name's Jeff. And I'm like, cool, <laughs> Jeff. Just ask. So whose kid's yours? What are you doing here? You know, and yeah. I, have oh. an alibi. I have to have a way to deal with that if they don't know who or if I can't let them know who. Dude, and that actually brings up a very, very good point. Brings up a very good point. Um, and a point that actually recently came up for me um, on a job that I work when it comes to assessing environments. Yeah. And learning how to assess your environment. If something's a small town, understand your presence is known. Everybody. Yeah. You're, you're Everybody. not on, not only is your presence known, but you better mind your mind your damn P's and Q's because let me tell you, you're you're being talked about in the sewing circle. Yep. And they're all angling and trying to figure you out and all the stuff's happening behind underneath the surface. 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What would you say is the hardest lesson you've learned in this industry? Hmm. The hardest lesson that I've had to learn in this industry. You know, the hardest lesson I've had to learn. I know beforehand it was learn when to put up and when to shut up. Hmm. But right now for where, where I'm at with running solo and where I'm at in my career, it has to be learning how to pace myself because Hmm. it's so easy to get overwhelmed and exhausted and to not take care of myself and yeah. it's very easy to find the excuses to write that off like yeah. i i need to go online and i have to hit all of these things and i have to do all of this research or else i'm not going to be able to advance it and where am i going to pull time from in order to add time to mm-hmm. and there's only so many hours in the day and you're not doing a service to anybody when you're running on 4 hours of sleep yeah. Because your brain is your weapon. And if you're not keeping that puppy sharp, yeah. then you're not, you're a liability. Yeah. And you can't not know, like you can't have those, like when they start doing client final jeopardy, like if you don't know, say you don't know and you'll find an answer. Uh, but like, yeah, you got to know most of the stuff and be sharp and be clipping with everything. Yes. And, and exhaustion is a mind. very, very real thing. Eating is one thing that I struggle with and uh, 
just from a fact of like, I'll get so wrapped up into my work and everything is go, 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 go. And then I wonder why I'm having like these like cloudy moments and brain lapses and stuff. And it's because, holy shit, I haven't eaten in six hours. (laughs) And, you know, some people are like, oh, well, food is a weakness. But no, okay, no, that's human survivability, okay? You need the nutrients in order to operate. We survive because our stomachs drove us to hunt. Like, blow me. It's like, <laughs> but you need the glucose. I, I think that the biggest, the biggest lesson came down to exhaustion because, and I experienced this, here's a shit story where, no. where I definitely screwed the pooch, I I was running hours and hours and hours and hours back to back. And I, it was one of my first solo gigs. So you really have a pressure on yourself to perform. And like, this is my opportunity. This is my legacy. I've waited years to get here and here's my performance. And then I fucked up Mm -hmm. and I missed, I missed a pickup. Uh, That's a big one. A lot of some of you can, but yeah, that's 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 a reality check. That's like reality just bop. Yeah, no, you. no, but that is. I need to understand talking, how I made this mistake. We're talking ten years in this industry. Yeah, and I've been consistent in this industry. Yeah, and I've known all the ins and outs. But holy shit, it is the lessons that you learn after you think you know it all that really count. Because 100%. I thought I had everything A plus B equals C, and yeah. then I got a brain fog audible that was thrown in and that I did to myself for my own exhaustion because I wasn't pacing myself properly in my work. And then I missed a pickup and everybody in EP knows how damning that is. That is literally, that is like, yeah, that's literally one of those, just say the word, take my own life moments. Like that's like, you're like, look, look, my heart (laughs) was found Byron disemboweled in his own room. Yeah. <laughs> okay. My entire heart and gut just yeah. oh, 100%. Yeah. It was terrible, terrible. And the feeling was terrible, extremely humbling because after all of these years, sometimes you need a good punch in the mouth to remember exactly where your place is. Yeah. hundred percent. But, but it came back to exhaustion. I was putting in all of these hours and I was not paying attention to certain things that something slipped. Yeah. So no, and now I go back and I have to try and find a system that works for me. And maybe it's not my phone. Maybe it's a notepad. Maybe it's something different. You have to really find what works for you so that you can make sure that you remember everything. But that is very, very, very real. Oh, yeah. Extremely well, real. And it's, it's, is also, real. it's macro and micro, man. Like that same that same thing. You dial that into your family. If you're trying to have a family as well, if you're trying to have any exterior relationships that you need in order to have homeostasis, like internal inner psychic homeostasis, you have to like, I am very deliberate about when I rest, deliberate rest, how much fun I'm going to have, deliberate fun, how much of my work actually like feeds me and makes me feel good. And then when I get to that spot where it's like, ah, this is just getting mind numbing. I'm very deliberate about these things. And That keeps me healthy, but I manage expectations with my relationships. This is what I'm going to be doing. This is where I'm going to be. This is the time I set aside for us and we're going to go do this. And that level of organization and management, it takes awareness. You need to be aware of yourself yeah, going and what you're doing. And that's, that's huge. That's how you don't lose your family and your other relationships. And that's how you don't lose yourself in the yes. universe because these clients all are like the sun in a universe you're like oh i'm just gonna go work for like you name any stupid company like the vizio tv company there's a ceo up there and a family and then when you go work for them you're in their universe and they're like mr vizio like it and it can absorb you yes. it can literally s- yes. suck you into where everything you're doing is about that universe you have to maintain and feed your identity and take care of yourself. Otherwise, yeah, not, yeah. that's true. Don't, don't lose yourself. The only way to have longevity in this industry is self-preservation. Yeah, yeah. Self-preservation and then relationships, the right yeah. relationships. Yeah, yeah. And and if you're not performing at on all cylinders, I'm sorry, you're not going to be useful to anybody. Sure. And you're not going to be able to help the way that you want to help. And it's, it's only going to hurt yourself because you know that you will be, you're so you're capable of so much more. So it can be very frustrating for the person, Mm -hmm. but take a step back. 
Take yeah. a step back and know what you're getting yourself into and then know how to really plan your expectations. Yeah. And then how do you get over things like that? 100%. And like personally, I, I always bring exercise bands because if I don't have something that I'm constantly having to expel some, some type of energy on yeah. and keeping my body mobile and yeah. staying mobility strong. helps makes me feel better. Yeah. And then that's part of a routine that I rest, but don't be ashamed of setting up a routine for yourself and don't be ashamed to have to shut the laptop down. This isn't the military anymore where it's you work until you get the job done. No, understand you can call it, put the laptop down, get some rest or else you are liability. Yeah. 100% proudest moment in the game. Oh, dude. Always when everything goes off without a hitch. Always. That's what everyone says. It's the truth. Like when you do it, you're like, we got away with it. They're, they're leaving on the jet from the FBO and you're like, ha, we got away with it. <laughs> right. yeah. 100%, 100%. 100%. Every time. But, it, but it's it's the ones where you do like some sneaky poopy stuff. Yeah. You know? oh, yeah. And it got and squiggly like, and you guys flattened it out and made it work. Yeah. Yeah. But but it's like you locked down that secret route that nobody ever knew about. <laughs> that secret, like back a house route. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. But for some reason, everybody always high fives you on the way through like you've been there your whole fucking life. Yeah, yeah. And you just look like gold to them. That mm-hmm. that those moments are hands down my favorite. hundred yeah. percent. I dig it. Now, what would you say? Mm. What's it all for? How would you like to be remembered? <laughs> my therapist. <laughs> I know, right? you have to take out the right? Um, what I want to, what I would want to be remembered for, because I know that in order, look, I want to go higher up in the game, obviously, yes. as as we all do. And I think that when you hit a certain level, um, you kind of get humbled up enough that you teach. Yeah, and I feel like one of the things that I want to be remembered for is passing on information because so many people hold it just way too close to the chest and yep. they're not passing on any, any proper sources or anything that is really, really helpful and would benefit these up and coming people because our truth is that this is temporary. Sorry, but it's temporary. Yeah. And I would, I would want to be remembered as like, professional yeah you know uh maintaining professionalism but definitely setting a new standard as far as like women in the industry and standards that are up, upheld for that but also adding a you know adding a level of transparency to the back of the house for everybody because yeah. everybody needs to set themselves up on a proper foundation or else the foundation is going to crumble and you're going to well, wonder where everything went wrong when the fault never like was with and that and it's bull crap. Like there's just, I, I, you know, as I've moved through this, this, this industry, it's like, I run into these tribes that just think they're awesome because they only play with themselves and they share all their own ideas and their own. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, this is not it, but you guys have been training for so long and not operationally have no idea. <laughs> like this yeah. Is, but what's really so out much. there, you know, and it's like, so get out there, be a missing white evolution. Girl. Yeah, exactly. And 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 being transparent about what this game really looks like. Like, here's one that I need to make a field note about. There are times when my best urban camouflage slash wingman is literally pulling out my phone and just looking like a dude. Like, I'm paying yeah. attention. And I know there's all those old schoolers who are like, you can't look at your phone. But like, when I'm working solo sometimes and my client wants me to be have discretion, not be looked at all the time, and I need to keep eyes on them, I will pull out my phone and I will pay attention to what they're doing. And I'll also look like I'm on my phone and people will walk past me and not think twice because it's urban camouflage and my clients know what I'm doing and every, and we move through environments and no one pays attention and, you know, not on TMZ that day. So there's little things like that, that I think people aren't talking about because they just don't want to be the ones to get shot at for it because everyone gets on their high horse. But I know I'm working one to two details a day and I know exactly what I'm doing that I would actually tell someone else to do that is obviously helping them because, you know, my students and at our school and people that I meet are like, dude, thank you for that tip. It helped, you know, so there's a lot out there. that Everything else that's new. Yeah. Yeah. You have have to adapt to the newer things. And 
a lot of it's it's unfortunate that people aren't talking about the the reality and and how how much it's changed even in the last three years yeah. where in the last three years it, it was still very much a taboo even for you and I to mm-hmm. be pulling out a cell phone and now now it's it's Not very weird. much like a requirement it, it, yeah. you're, you're <laughs> you'll find yourself to, like what are you gonna do you're just gonna stand here and stare at him what are you gonna do you're gonna do the the connectivity position and look like an ap dude wait don't don't, don't. <laughs> yeah what are you gonna do how are you gonna look like <laughs> i love know? the entrepreneur one yeah 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 um the connectivity position and i'm like don't stand there like that you know that's one of the big things when i get new dudes like don't don't stand there, ever stand like that or you know well anyways Yes. Well, I think this episode is packed with great content. I hope so. And, and <laughs> honestly, I, I hope that there are like, you know, little little things like go and buy some of those things. Go yeah. go do something like that and YouTube mm-hmm. it and, and yeah. look it up. But don't look for it within just the scope of EP. Venture outside of that and 100%. see what other things will play a role. Like maybe you, maybe YouTube, how to repair, maybe YouTube, how to repair a hotel door. And maybe it shows you how to reset a key card access so you can get yourself in whenever you want to. I'm not saying that it's out there, but I'm also saying it might be out there. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, right. No, a hundred percent. We're civilians that protect civilians. So we need to understand and use civilian gear as much as possible. That's kind of the squiggly thing about being an EP agent. It's like you want to be tactical, but like being tactical for us is being a civilian protector, you know? So that's the game. I love it. Uh, What are you up to these days? Where can people find you if they have questions about gear or female carry posture Um, and all that stuff? Oh, man. Uh, So the only social media I have is my Instagram. (laughs) Um. But it's Rachel J. I'm sure we'll put it out there. I'll put the link in the show notes if you're good with it. Yeah, of course. Of course. And yeah, if if there are questions, reach out. Like you and I stay in touch all the time, constantly going back and forth, throwing memes back and forth, talking about classes, you know, shit talking who messed up that day. (laughs) Right, right, right. Doing what we do. God bless you. Yeah. But um, please, like if there are questions or whatever like you can just hit me up and be like i think you're wrong i don't care yeah, yeah. let's talk about it maybe i am wrong yeah. what do you think yeah <laughs> yeah but it's it's all open conversation like the 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 fact of it is you keep somebody protected the yeah. method of it is users just use your discretion yep. might work for you might not work for me but let's compare notes <laughs> yeah 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 well, I'm well, glad awesome. that we got to do this again. Okay. Yes. Let's not wait another three years before we do the next one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is good. It's always an honor um, to have you on this thing. Love what you're doing in the industry. Love that you're talking about the uh, solo game. That's a big gray spot right now. I'm going to probably try and dig into that a little bit more. Um, yes. And uh, thanks for being a solid female on this game and holding the flag and and, and making it. Thanks. Game. Well, you know what? I got to say thank you to everybody else for allowing me to carry that banner. You know, it's uh, it it's definitely an honor. I will say it's it's an honor. 100 percent. All right. We will talk soon. Yes, we will. Boom. This is my MCK. There are many like it, but this one is mine. If you've got a firearm sitting around a pistol that you are not doing anything with, Get an MCK. They make them for every single model. If you want a micro conversion kit that will turn your handgun into a force multiplier, get one, man. They are ultra affordable. CAA MCK micro conversion kits are the changing the game, y'all. So if you don't have one, you need to get one. Get one. Your women, children, people that are less physically potent will be able to fire your firearm to farther distances with more accuracy. You will be able to fire your firearm to farther distances with more accuracy. I wanna get one of these into the hands of 100,000 more protectors this year because ultimately we are only as good as the things, the nation is only as good as its protection. Your home is only as safe and as good as your ability to protect it. MCK, go get one, drop your handgun in, take it to the next level, out.
Boom. Yo, if you're a private security professional wanting to take your game to the next level, go to executiveprotectiontrainingday.com to check out my personal success package for private security professionals. Check it out, executiveprotectiontrainingday.com. And remember, y'all, hard skills do save lives, but soft skills get you paid. Boom. Boom. And to support this podcast, go to executiveprotectionlifestyle.com and contribute to our Patreon account. That Patreon account is what helps me make this podcast possible, contributing to this brand, what we're doing here, making it so that I can bring better guests on, making it so that we can plan more events and just expand the contribution to the private security industry and also to make an America a safer place. Do whatever you can, contribute whatever you can because it makes all of these things possible. Thanks for those contributions. Yo, and before we go, you know I got a shout out to the sponsors, starting out with Primary Weapon Systems, PWS. They truly are the evolution of the rifle. Use Byron for 10% off. Gray Man and Company, the most comfortable tactical suits in the game. Use Byron for 10% off with them. Until the next podcast, this is Byron Rogers, protector by nature and by trade. Out. Boom.